So on our last podcast, I shared with our listeners about confidence coming from the inside out. And today I am welcoming Robin Balsley of Graceful Impression. Robin, good morning and welcome to the Bright Shiny Podcast. Hi, Sherry. Thanks so much for having me. So let me just share a little bit. You were, uh, you and still are a very successful independent sales executive and felt this need and, and a woman who is a diva who loves fashion. And um, you, I, I don't know whether it was you felt it or you just wanted to dive deeper into helping people with fashion. Tell us a little bit about your story and, and how you came to wanting to found Graceful Impression. Sure. So basically being in sales all these years, you really realize it takes, first of all, it takes seven seconds to make a first impression. And I realize that how people are showing up and, and mo I'm really focused on women. I think that um, we get busy in our days and, and our lives and our careers, our kids, our husbands, our families, whatever it is. And we don't take time for ourselves. So we show up very differently than how we really are. And I found CEOs of companies that I was just shocked that they were the powerful person that they were because they showed up in such a unprofessional, just a very mediocre way. And I think that that really is what captured it for me. And I realized that there is a, there's something missing there as we age too, that we're just not taking time for ourselves. Oh yeah. That aging thing. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's happening to everyone I hear. <laughs> um, so, so then where did you begin? Like, how did you, you decided you wanted to do something and, you know, and the show is about the bright, shiny object. So that you had this bright, shiny object that was saying there is a need. What, what happened from that point? Well, I actually was working with a very good business coach at the mm. time. Mm. Just, just her name is Sherry Ruskis. <laughs> and you really helped me drive that. So you've helped me dig deeper into myself. And I think that's what it was, is that I was longing for something. I love the sales aspect of my career, but it wasn't feeding my passion as much anymore. And I was looking for something that just was, that wouldn't, I mean, my, my vision and my bright, shiny object is helping hundreds of women feel fabulous and beautiful inside out every day. And I just, it, I didn't have that before. And now I have the something that just really helps me make a difference. And I, that's really what brought me to graceful impression. I saw a need and I knew I had this, I had the skill set and the ideas that could make this happen. And, you know, you came uh, in those early days, you came and actually helped me in my closet. And, yes. um, and it was awesome because um, like, I, you made me get rid of a lot of stuff too. So there's that layer of, of just dead weight almost that was in there, including my beach boys t-shirt that had holes in it, you know, but I, I agreed. <laughs> um, and um, tell us about the methodology you used because it was huge for me and I'm actually doing it with, with Ed, my husband right now uh, to, to, cause he's like transitioning from the corporate world to, you know, carefree retirement and deciding on what clothes he even needs in his closet anymore. So tell us about the turning the hangers around. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I'll start with what we have to start with out of the gate before we even look at the clothes is we have to clear the mental clutter okay. before we can even clear our closets. So we have to figure out what's, you know, and some of those pieces like your Beach Boy t-shirt that you're holding on to, why are you holding on to that? So many women, especially hold on to clothes when they lose 10 pounds, they want to keep those clothes. But every time they open their closet, they see those clothes and it reminds them that they haven't lost those 10 pounds yet. And so it just really, it wreaks havoc mm -hmm. on our on our mindset and we, or you've, you've got something with those jeans, on it. those yes, jeans, those, those nasty <laughs> jeans, those hard pants, we call them now. <laughs> <laughs> but what I found is, so then a lot of people are like, well, they're so overwhelmed. They open their closet. It's full of clothes, but they have nothing to wear in their eyes. So I found that if you, an easy, the best quickest way to get your uh, closet organized is to turn all your hangers backwards. And then when you wear something, put it forward. And then in, within six months, you can look at your closet and see that you have what you've worn and what you haven't worn. And if you're not wearing it, get rid of it. It just causes, again, clutter in our mind what is the clutter, clutter in our closet. And it's things that we don't, they don't serve us. We don't feel good in them. We're not wearing them. 
And have you found it has almost been like this, because I know that you've you've um, transitioned away from so much of doing the closet cleanses more into mm-hmm. doing workshops with women. Um, right. But what did you find was like some of the top reasons that that, you know, like there's the weight thing that, you know, I want to get to that point. But what were some other things that you found that that had women holding on to pieces of clothing? It's really the past. I mean, so you, um, a lot of them have these corporate wardrobes that they're not wearing anymore. And that's when they were the CEO of this company or whatever they were doing. And they don't want to give up those. So it's, it's, you're giving up your identity in a sense, because Mm -hmm. those were your identity 10 years ago, but it's not who you are now. And even like you talked about your husband, he doesn't go to work every day. So he does need to change his wardrobe. We need to dress for the lives we have right now. And that will empower us. Well, it's interesting too, even with, as we went through the pandemic, right? Because then we got used to dressing from the waist up and, um, uh, but, and do you think that the pandemic changed people's uh, clothing habits beyond that, that piece of it? Oh, completely, completely. So um, the workshop, another reason that I got into the workshop is that it, everyone is so confused with this hybrid world we live in. One day you're at the office, one day you're in front of a client, next day you're working from home and you've got the kids around or whatever it might be. So it's very confusing how we show up every day. And I felt that there's a real need for that. And even within companies, like they've lost the company culture because everybody's working from home, they're not together. And how do you build those teams when you're all scattered around? So it's pulling them together, pulling yourself together so that you are dressing. And I say from the waist down as well, because we got to get dressed and you don't have to get dressed up. Right. But sweatpants give a whole different, uh, it's your mindset. It's I totally I, I, I dressed. I dressed fully for this podcast. <laughs> and you look fantastic. <laughs> but you you even know, you think about your days when you wear something you don't feel good in and you just it it reeks, it just your mindset is different all day long. But if you get up and get dressed, and that was something I really promoted during the pandemic, is get up and get dressed because and I had so many clients tell me that it really encouraged them because I posted a lot of things on social media, like, okay, here's my outfit of the day. I got dressed, get dressed. And those that did get dressed felt so much better each day because they took the time. And it seems so, it's not just the clothes. It's how they make you feel. Mm-hmm. You're more productive. You're, you, your mindset's better. You perceive differently. I, I mean, this is a joke I say all the time, but uh, you know, a lot of people don't turn on their cameras in a meeting because they're not dressed for the day on a Zoom call. <sighs> But would you go to a conference and put a bag over your head because you don't feel like <laughs> dressing up? You know, <laughs> so we got to show up. And if someone calls you and says, "Hey, do you want to hop on a quick call?" Be ready. Be ready for that day. Yeah, I've had it happen once, and I said, "Okay, from now on, I'm getting no makeup more. on, getting you know exactly yeah. right." And you don't have to and- get glammed up every day. And I mean, I even have a client that's in the finance world, and she said they don't wear suits anymore, but they wear a blazer and jeans and. So it's all shifting. It's more casual, but people are still getting up and getting dressed. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. You, I know that you're doing some research um, for the work that you're doing in your workshops around enclosed. Is it? I hope I'm saying this right. Enclosed mm-hmm. cognition. And Correct. Could you talk about that and what that the whole psychological piece of all of this. So really, it is our mindset. So um, there was a person that did some research, Adam Galinsky, I think is his name. And he really found that um, how what we are wearing affects our mindset. It affects how we are perceived. It affects our productivity. And it's it's it, there is a connection from our mind to what we have, what we've put on for the day. It's 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 it's, it's a psychological phenomenon. Like it's it's real. Like it's not just something that feels good. It's a real philosophy that that's what happens. Like we do feel different. And what, like, what do you share in your workshops that can help women to up, up, up level, I guess is the word that comes to me, just how they're coming towards this. So it's really discovering. I think that's the other piece to it too, is we all have our own. A lot of women say, I don't know what my style is. I don't care about the clothes. I don't want it, but we all have it. It's our sense of identity in a way, like who we are and how we show up. And so in my workshops, we start with the mental piece and we talk about this in clothed cognition and how, how that does make a difference. So the first step is that figuring out why you don't want to get dressed, what's holding you back. And then figuring out what, what do you wear when you feel really good? And then you focus on those type of outfits and I'll take you through the mental piece of it. 
And then we get into just how to organize your closet so that it's more manageable, how to get rid of things. And then we talk about this capsule wardrobe, which is a big piece for me. It's a very streamlined approach to dressing so that you have a core basic wardrobe. And I give you all the, the you know, all the things you need for that. And um, then you can add pieces to make it more interesting. So it's just kind of that whole, I kind of bring the whole thing together and how you can do it on your own. And um, the biggest part is when you bring a team together, especially in a company, we can work with your brands. Like how, how is your team showing up? Are they representing your brand? And if they're not representing mm. your brand, then that's really important too. How do you want everyone to look and, and be a part of this team? So I think that's, I customize it to, for companies so that their team is showing up how they want them to show up. You know, and as you talk about that, it seems like it would be really fun if you're on a team and you're all starting to notice what each other's wearing, like, oh, that's cool. And oh, that looks really good with that. Or, you know, those kind of things. It really is a fun team building. Uh, the whole thing comes around where you, you're bringing the team together. It's a team building. It's not, you know, we're not all going to hold each other up and let somebody fall back and all that, you know, it's just something very different. <laughs> and and it is like, you can get on the zoom and say, oh, I love the way you wore your sweater today, or you're in the office. And and there's an accountability now too, because mm. everybody knows that we all learned this. So now how are we all going to show up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's in that showing up. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say like in your journey through this has been like the bright shiny that has come out for you that you know that you're on the right path? And I, I asked this question because there's so many people who, especially because you're you're going between two careers really. Mm -hmm. Um, and like what keep, you know, maybe even the question to ask is what gets you up in the morning and what just is that bright, shiny, that, that pulls you through the day. I think when I see the women transition into their, these realize that what kind of like, um, who is it? The witch that, you know, or that it's always been with, it's always inside of you. You always had that it. was Glenda. Glenda That's right. The Glenda. Good witch. Yes. <laughs> so it's always been inside of you and it's just pulling that out. And when I watch them step into in front of the mirror and I, we've put something together or I've showed them just how to tweak their closet just ever so slightly and their face lights up. That's my bright, shiny object. That makes, that just makes me sore. Like I love how happy that makes me feel that I can mm. give that gift to someone else to empower them and to step into their confidence and feel good about themselves. And then on the the flip side of that, there are the bright, shiny objects, right? That take us down the wrong rabbit holes along your journey. What has been your bright, shiny, that was a little distracting for you? So it's running the two businesses. So that's a big thing. So I, it's very easy to go where where the, where, what I know, and that's my sales job. So it's, it's very easy to step into that every day and, and feel successful. And then I keep pushing the graceful impression off to the side. And then that's, you got to focus on it. You got to focus and I schedule time every single day I have. It's the first thing in the morning. I work on my graceful impression business because if I don't, then it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it's what lights me up. So it, then it just starts my day in such a great way because now I've already given the prime time to graceful impression and now I'm ready for the day. So that's that bright, shiny object that takes me down is being unfocused. And then when I get focused, it lights me back up again. That is beautiful. Beautiful. And I love you talking about it every day, um, probably during morning momentum, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's part of my morning momentum. <laughs> Um, what, um, who have been your champions along the way? And, and as you look into the fashion world, most especially, I think, like, who do you see that's really working, uh, towards helping women more in this area that we're not like these sex pots and, uh, sex pots that was really aging myself. Um, uh, but you know, that, that are really helping move this movement forward. Got it. Yep. So, I mean, first and foremost, my husband, like he just is always supporting me no matter what I do. He always supports it. I've had other businesses along the way and he always never questions it, never, and always tells me how good I do. My family, my kids, everybody supports me and you, Sherry. I mean, you, I can remember to this day when I hit send on that first blog that I sent out and announced that I'm starting this graceful impression business. I'm going to, I'm a personal stylist. I'm certified personal stylist. And you helped me get that email together, the blog. And then I hit that send button and you were right there on my shoulder. So, oh. and you still are like, you'll, I get little 
like, Hey, turn your eyes up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a huge support and thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, you are and so I think welcome. there are, there are women out there. There's a fashion designer. Her name is Rebecca Minkoff and she's so much about empowering women. And I just believe she's a very creative designer, makes great clothing, but she also, it's all about the women. And I just, that she has been uh, somebody that I followed and really think a lot of that just she's making a difference in a very, very, very strong way. Beautiful. Um, and I, I, one of the things that I see that you have done and, and happens in successful enterprises is the consistency, your blog, mm -hmm. your, you know, just continuing to get it out there, even on those days when maybe you don't get one response or you don't have anything happen, you continue to do it. And I know, um, and I highly recommend to those of you listening, we'll have in the show notes, all of um, Robin's contact info, but definitely get her newsletter because you do a lot of research on it and have a lot of really good information just about fashion trends and what's happening out there. Yeah, my big thing is about shopping our closet first. I think I, I'm not a big fan of influencers or that are out there pushing, you know, this is my favorite dress of the day. I'd buy this, buy this, buy this. Let's mm -hmm. start at our closet first. So my blogs are really around trying to take what we already own and how, if I'm talking about a pair of red pants or whatever it might be, it's like, how can you take something in your closet that could look very similar without buying something new? And that's really, that's where I like to start. We, I mean, we do need to buy new things, but that's where I like to start. And that's where my blog really bases from. So I do a lot of research on how it all comes together. What, um, what about people who are just maybe just feeling really down about themselves? Um, just, you know, I look in my closet, let's say, and I, I just don't think anything looks good anymore. And I'm just, I'm down. What, what advice would you give or recommendations of ways to start the process of changing that, that, um, story really. Cause a lot of times it's just stories that we're telling ourselves. Absolutely. I think, you know, it, it happens more than not. So a lot of people think that it's just them, but so many clients that I've worked with, they all feel the same way. They're embarrassed about their closets. They don't like what they have. The quickest thing you can do is take something that you really love. And when you wear it, you feel good in it and try to wear mm -hmm. it in a different mm -hmm. way. So let's say yeah. you have a really cute blazer that really empowers you. Well, instead of wearing it with a blouse, wear it with a t-shirt. Stop one second. So sorry. All right. That's all right. I'll just take this out. So okay. um, if you could remember what you were saying. Yes. So basically what we do is um, you... Take something that you absolutely love. And since I'm going to use a blazer as an example, that you do feel good when you wear this blazer, but you always wear it with a blouse. Well, try to wear it with a, a t-shirt instead this time or wear it in a different way. And it just, when you wear things a little bit differently, it just gives you a little bit of a lift up of how, because we wear, we tend to wear the same things over and over again, which is boring. And that brings us down. So wearing something in a different way, color, I, a lot of us are afraid to wear color. You've got a great color on today, Sherry, okay. and it just, it brightens you up. I mean, I think color is important. So if you can add a little color, I think that's a, another great way to lift your mood. Fantastic. Um, and, and, you know, I love the whole shopping your closet so that it isn't like this big expense that you're looking at. Correct. Um, and, but what if I'm shopping my closet and I've shopped it for so long that I just can't even bear it anymore? What would you recommend? I think what you need to do is you need to take out the things that you really know that you just don't like. You have, you can't get rid of everything, but you start there and then see what you have and where you can possibly add a couple things in. Like, let's say you go through your closet and you realize that all your jeans just don't fit right. So buy yourself a new pair of jeans that feel really good. Cause that I, I can tell you jeans are the first thing to date you. If you have older jeans they, and, or they don't fit right, that's very uncomfortable. And jeans can take you from the office to um, out for date night. I mean, jeans can take you all the way. Like it's the, a good pair of jeans goes a long way. So I think finding those pieces that you do, you know, things that you do wear, but just up, up level them, you know, get some, get a new pair of jeans, get a new uh, cardigan or something that just gives you a little bit more color. Cool. And what about 
boundaries. Boundaries because, you know, we we are surrounded by people who mm-hmm. sometimes uh, have our best interest, think they have our best interest in mind, or sometimes they don't have our best interest in mind. Mm-hmm. How do you shut off that noise if someone says, oh, don't, you shouldn't be wearing that or you shouldn't be doing that? No, I think that's so important. And really, you listen to yourself. Your gut knows. When you know when you're wearing something, first of all, if you look in the mirror and you feel like your face lights up a little bit more, then that's the right color for you or that's the right outfit for you. If you're tucking at something all day, then no, it's not. But listen to yourself first and you know what feels good and empower it, wear it. I mean, I see women wear some of the craziest outfits and you can tell they're just rocking it because they're confident. (laughs) You know, if you're confident in it, wear it and don't, and I, I think there are no rules. Like, you know, you can wear white after labor day, you can wear a shorter skirt. If you have great legs, even if you're 60, like it just, you have to, you can, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, I just think we get so caught up in what we should right. do, shouldn't do, you know, and there's no rules and just wear what you feel fabulous in. And, and if you have a great feature of your body show that, you know, it mm. just, it's, I think we forget about it, that we have to kind of cover ourselves all up. And I'm not saying you want to wear something seductive or something, but you can (laughs) still do it in a very classy way. Right. And classy. I think that's, that's the good good thing. And I think Pinterest is a great tool. Like if you're looking like you're not sure what, how to put things together, let's say you Mm -hmm. have a really cool pair of, I'll say those red pants again, then go into Pinterest and say outfits for red pants. And you'll see a whole bunch of ways to to put things together. So that can help you kind of see what styles you like too. Cause we all, we know what we like and wear those things. Beautiful. Beautiful. What, is there anything else that, that you would just recommend um, in our time here together before we wrap things up that, Mm -hmm. um, that just women need to know, want to know to really help to build their confidence when it comes to this material that we put on our skin? Don't be afraid of it. I mean, it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. I think we get overwhelmed with, we don't, you know, we don't have style or I don't have fashion. I don't care about fashion. Do take the time. And I think um, as we get into the, our busy worlds, another great tip that I love is that if I know I've got three meetings in the week on Sunday, I will put the outfits together for those three meetings. So on those days I get up, I get dressed and I, I I'm ready to go instead of rushing and wearing something I don't feel good in. I mean, a great example, I have a really good friend of mine that um, she has an amazing closet full of beautiful clothes. And she was going to an event with her husband and she just was in a hurry. And she just put something on that she really didn't feel that good in. And it ended up, her husband was surprising her for her birthday party. And she showed up to this party in something she did not feel good in. So it's just, it happens to us all the time. And so planning ahead is what we, you know, sometimes you just have to plan ahead. Like you look at your week, plan your week. And literally it takes 15 minutes to put a few outfits together, have them hanging in your closet and be ready for those important times that you really want to look your very best. Cause I think we, we, we think it's not important, but it really is because you will show up differently. I promise. And I, and, and I'm sure that even sometimes, cause I think I've done it too, where I've planned on wearing something and then I go and put it on and I go, Oh, I just don't feel this today. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely, and listen to that. Don't wear it then. Or another really big thing is if you've worn something all day and it's been tugging at you, it doesn't fit you right. You don't like it. Do not put it back in your closet Mm. because it's not going to feel good the next time. So just remove it and remove that from your, those buttons are popping. They're going to be popping the next time. Right. And so why put it back in your closet? And that's just a simple way. Have a little bin in your closet. You throw things in and then give it to the sister Carmen or wherever you're at, what, you know, some kind of a charity. Charity. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I do, I, I, I have been much better about that. Yeah. No more beach boys tank tops. In my well, and I think we think of it this way too. It's like someone else will wear that and feel really good in it. So right. when you give it away, it actually gives it more life. And so the whole sustainability piece of it too, is that, you know, someone else can wear it. Well, and you know, it's funny, my other rock and roll uh, t-shirts that I have, I, I've given them to my daughter, to Bailey, and um, she loves them. She wears them all great. the time. Yeah. <laughs> she looks good at them. She looks like maybe I kind of did back in the day. <laughs> you rocked them as well. <laughs> yeah. And so it's really like the Fleetwood Mac. She has the Fleetwood Mac one. And uh, so it's really just, it, it actually brings me joy to see her enjoying it as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the other piece about 
clothing too, that if you're not enjoying it, somebody else might. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, you know, you're talking about how great Bailey looks in it. It brought something else to mind that I think as women, we should be complimenting each other. Mm. And if you see somebody looking really good, tell them because that's how, when you give out, it comes back. And I think that we have to, you know, just, I've seen that with, I'll be at the grocery store. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love your top. And they look at me like I'm strange, but then you can see they kind of smile and they walk (laughs) on with their day because it makes them feel good. So take the time to pay it forward and and compliment others about how they look in a a genuine way. Totally. Right. Yeah. If it looks bad, say nothing. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Just zip it. (laughs) And and with that said too, you know, that just brings up about like compliment, like how about receiving compliments? Absolutely. Um, Talk about that just for a moment of just, you know, how do you receive a compliment? Somebody says it's a beautiful shirt you have on. Which by I am, the way, I'm so really guilty is. of this. I'm gu- very guilty of it because I always feel self-conscious. So I'll say, oh, you know, I've had this for a while or, oh, you know, I'll, I'll make an excuse about it instead of all you need to say is thank you and let it go. And that's all you need to say, because I think we, again, you know, we, it's that confidence, like, thank you. And then move on. And maybe even say, you know, thank you. I love this. This is my favorite shirt or yes, whatever, yes, right. Yes. To even enhance it. And more. you don't have to give them a compliment back. Right. Just say, just Hi, that's, that's something I always feel like I have to do. Oh, well, you look great too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Oh, you look better. <laughs> yeah. You're just so much nicer than mine. Yeah. <laughs> Take it and just enjoy it and breathe it, you know, do a quick little breath in and just breathe that in that how wonderful that was. Nice. I love it. I love it. What bright, shiny objects are in the future for graceful impression? I really believe it's these the professional styling workshops, working with groups of women, either in a a business environment or groups of girlfriends getting together and really working on this as a as a group effort so that we can all lift each other up. I think that's that's what's exciting Mm -hmm. me about the workshop is that it becomes it's almost becomes your tribe and you really it's just it's such an empowerful way to touch more women in a lot of, you know, in in a you can get a lot more women together and make more of an impact than just working one-on-one. Fantastic. Um, And I think in this day and age, like we really need to be lifting each other up as women. Yes. And connection. We all need connection. And we, you know, especially for those um, like entrepreneurs who are working by ourselves all day long, it's like, that's even more reason to get together with others. And again, it doesn't have to be an, you don't have to be a part of an office or a team, but you can even get girlfriends together. And I think it's really empowering. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you so much for your time here today, Rob. And um, I just, I can't, we'll have to get you back here on the podcast down the road here. And as you continue to grow and explore and find other ways to empower women. Thank you so much, Sherry. And I just love all the things that you're doing in our world too. All right. Thank you so much.